very different kind of form of regional start, which I kind of admire actually, maybe admire a little bit, a little bit more than some of this idealized regionalism. Nichols is an interesting artist. He was from Nebraska, so he grew up in the Midwest. Uh, was trained in art in Chicago, at the Art Academy in Chicago. Uh, I think he ended up actually teaching um, at Illinois State University. But then later he actually became the art editor of the Encyclopedia Britannica. So, you know, interesting artist. But um, this work here, Grain Elevator from 45, this kind of deals with another aspect of farming life in the 30s, the 40s. A lot of you probably are aware of the fact that you had the Dust Bowl in the 30s, um, where you had massive drought in areas of the Midwest, even down into Texas. For example, Oklahoma really was hit very hard by this Dust Bowl, areas of Texas. And uh, as I said, you have massive drought. A lot of farmers lost their crops. And of course, all of that um, added to the, um, the financial struggles of the Depression. Um, and if you take a look at Nichols' print here, you've got, again, a, a, a farm building, farm buildings, workers. Look at, look at this land here. It's all been dried out, eroded. You've got this eroded soil. And it does seem to kind of speak to this period of the, um, you know, of the drought, of the Dust Bowl. And this is just, I think, a more, in a way, even though it's very dramatic, it's, you know, it's, it's been dramatized, he speaks more to, I think, the actual realities of life in the Midwest. You know, the environmental problems. Uh, just, again, the struggles to farm um, in the Midwest with some of these environmental dis disasters, like the Dust Bowl. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to, I think, start off the gallery talk with really talking about this movement of regionalism, which um, really does sort of typify a lot of people's views of Midwestern art. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to then talk about this piece, and I'm going to grab, I have a little show and tell, <laughs> grab. Um, and by the way, as I'm talking, please um, ask questions if there's pieces that catch your attention that you want us to look at and talk about, I, I'd be happy to, to do that. I do have a bit of a script that I'm working from, but I'd be happy to deviate from that. So this is an artist by the name of George Rickey. This is called Landscape of East Galesburg. Dates 1941. And what I'm showing you here, this is a mural that Rickey did at Knox College. Um, Rickey's probably one of the most famous artists actually in the gallery here. I don't know if you are familiar with Rickey. Ricky actually went on to become a very famous abstract kinetic sculptor. Yeah, very, very well known. He did these large um, kinetic, these moving kinetic abstract sculptures. There's one at the airport in Peoria. So if you've ever seen this piece that has these moving uh, parts, um, it, it's a it's a uh, Ricky. But yeah, Ricky was was um, kind of right up there with Donald Judd and some of these abstract sculptors. What's interesting, though, is a young man, Ricky, um, came to Galesburg, came to Knox. In 1941-42, Ricky was part of a program that was started by the Carnegie Corporation, which was they funded for artists to go to colleges that didn't have an art faculty. So at that time, Knox didn't really have a large art faculty. So Ricky was again part of this Carnegie program of, of basically artist residencies. Uh, maybe this is the beginning of Studios Midwest. <laughs> so again, this idea of artist residencies. So Ricky came to Knox, and he was here for about a year and a half. And he taught some classes. Uh, but then the other major thing he was commissioned to do was to do a mural for Knox College. And here's the mural. It's, it's huge. It's 15 by 15 feet. It's on loan to the Figgy Art Museum right now. I was curator, curator of the Figgy for a couple of years, so I kind of arranged this loan. And what happened was, in fact, to kind of explain more, um, what happened was the mural was in really horrible condition. Um, it was, again, put up in Seymour Union in the 42. But then in the early 60s, when they were modernizing the building, they ripped it down. They tore it into eight pieces. Harlan Gowdy, who knocks faculty, Harlan walked by and said, what? Excuse me, what in the H are you doing? And, um, and they said, well, we were told just to get rid of this. He goes, no. And so he saved it. But you guys, it was in horrible condition. And um, about, about seven or eight years ago, they had it restored. 
at the Chicago Conservation Center, $50,000 to have this restored. But it's in beautiful condition now. It's all been restored and preserved. And it is all alone right now at the, at the Figgy. But to kind of explain what's going on here, so he did this mural, and I'll just get a little bit closer you want to see it. Um, it is very, you know, he, it wasn't a WPA mural, but it's very much in that style and the theme of WPA art. It looks a lot like a WPA mural. And what you have here, the theme is this idea of, you have the great uh, thinkers of the Western tradition. Here, kind of here. So I think there's Da Vinci, <laughs> Galileo, Darwin, and they're handing off knowledge to Knox professors. <laughs> and, so, and the Knox professors are in turn handing off knowledge to Knox students. Right. So you, you have, again, this kind of just, yeah, this kind of glorification of elevated education. And then in the background, though, you do have scenes of Galesburg. And it is this, um, um, yeah, you've got these kind of kaleidoscopic views of Galesburg, you've got farm, the farming reach, the farming fields, you have some of the factories, small industry in Galesburg, the train. So what's going on here, he's presenting this kind of dynamic union of again kind of the, uh, the farming economy with industry, the railroad, and it's all being, you know, um, included in the mural. Uh, well, the reason I'm showing you this and then sh talking about this is that when Ricky was doing the mural, he would take Knox art students into the countryside and he would have them paint and he did sketches and oil paintings of the landscape around Galesburg, which were studies for the mural. It's very possible that this was maybe a, a study for some of this background of the mural. So I just think that's, that's interesting. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. I'll just toss this over here. Then you guys, do you want? Do, we, do you want to come down here um, and take a look at another?